Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of Daily Origami for YouTube. Today we're going to continue making some traditional items and we're going to make a crow today. And uh, I don't know about where you guys live, but where I live in the boonies here, our crows are huge. They're almost the same size as my dog. They're massive. Um, you don't want to mess with them. So <laughs> this is a common sight in rural Japan for sure. So uh, we're going to start off here with um, some paper that's just going to be a square um, piece of paper. Um, I'm using standard paper that's 15 by 15 centimeters. And I'll let you guys know how big my crow is when we're done. But um, if you're doing this for a special project or something, you'll know the size that you need. I'm going to make him blue just because I know sometimes the darker colors don't show up as good as we'd like them to. So we want to start off with a square base for our paper. So I'm going to start with my color side facing down. Go ahead and fold the paper in half both horizontally and vertically to get good creases there in the middle. Do the same thing this way too. Once I've gotten those creases with the color side facing up, fold into big triangle by folding in half diagonally. And do that both ways as well. So you've gotten that done, go ahead and open it back up to the color side. Find the mountain creases, which are the ones that we made first. Pinch opposite sides and just kind of push into the center. Things should just sort of shimmy around until you can get it to look like this nice big diamond or square, which is where the square base comes from. After you've gotten everything smushed down into that shape, make sure that those open flaps are facing down. And what we're going to do is take each of these bottom sections here and fold uh, into the center. Try to get as close to the center as you can. It doesn't have to be exact, but we do want to try to get it um, you know, kind of close. Go ahead and flip everything over and do the same thing on this side too. I know my center crease is a little faint. If you're having a hard time seeing it, you can fold over the flaps again too to get it to show up a little clearer. But So get both of those flaps folded over. Then what I want to do is take the little bit of triangle that you see up there and fold it back so that it's snug against the edges on the back side and you see this nice straight kind of crease along the top and we have this nice big triangle area here. Then I want to take both of these flaps and open them up and I'm going to take the top layer of everything here and open it up. This is just a big petal fold. We're going to smoosh everything out so that it can extend out to be a nice big diamond shape here. Get nice and flat. Then flip everything over Take the little triangle flap we put here, push it up again. And from here, I want to do kind of a similar thing on this side. Open both of these flaps, open this area up, and do a petal fold on this side too. Just another way to kind of get everything the way we need to there. Try to get everything to lay nice and smooth as you can. Now what I want to do with these two little like leggy kind of things down here is I'm going to take each of them and fold them straight up to this corner keeping this edge even with itself. So I'm just going to kind of fold up making sure it's nice and straight there and we get a good crease right here in the middle. Do the same thing over here on this side too. And sometimes it can be a little tricky because you get these sort of like boxy folds when you do this. Just make sure you kind of smooth it out first before making the crease so that we get both of those folded straight up. After getting that crease identified, I'm then going to use the uh, kind of point of where I had stuff here with that edge and just kind of bring everything over so that you can create a horizontal crease now that creates a parallel line with this edge and with the top part up here that goes through the center. And I'm just going to kind of use this point on the left side as my swivel point to keep everything kind of lined up. So try to get it so that you get a nice right angle right here on the side. Get everything kind of folded over. Like so. 
I'm going to do the same thing on this side. You can kind of copy what you've done here to help you along. So you can try to get stuff folded over like so. Then take the top part and fold it back down again. And then we're going to fold everything in half on that crease that you see in the center. And you need to kind of help things along a little as you do this because there's a lot of, a lot of paper involved. But that should give you what's kind of looking more like a body here with nice little crow feet and a big long tail. And the last little bit then is just to make your little crow head. And um, you want to try to create a diagonal crease that kind of comes right from this point where this uh, edge is here. And you could kind of start it there, pinch there at the point, get this part to reverse, and then you can kind of pull on the beak a little to, to sort of adjust the angle, you know, of his head. If you want him to be looking all serious like he's sleeping or something, you could keep his beak really low. You can have his beak out farther. It kind of depends on the angle that you're looking for for this. Um, but you can kind of, kind of play around with it and see which one looks better for you until you find a spot that you like. Go ahead and crease it off when you're done. And that should give you a finished little crow. Now, this does kind of stand up, but you do have the tail to sort of deal with, which uh, gets in the way. So uh, what you can do is have him stand. I don't have any room to stand on, do I? Hold up. I don't even think you guys can see from the angle that I'm doing everything at, but you can have him stand here on something as long as you give yourself some space there to let the uh, tail kind of hang down from then he does stand. So kind of a cool thing to put if you put him on a ledge so that you can have that little bit of tail sticking out at the bottom uh, to make your finished crow. Now let me tell you guys how big he is here. From head to tail feather looks like we're looking at about 11 centimeters in length. Or maybe I should say tall. And the widest point is probably going to be, if you look at from all the way down here, but I'm just going to measure from his feet to his body here for you guys. That's about six centimeters wide. That's kind of an approximation. He might be a little bigger if you count all the way out to his extended tail feather, but uh, that should give you your finished dimensions for your crow, which is our finished project for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.